So thanks for uh, organizing this uh, great uh, user group and uh, putting together such a lineup that, that matches very well. Um, I'm going to start my presentation. So, oh, uh, yeah. uh, it shows on the wrong screen, so I'll just do it like this. So, um, presentations about lucky shortcuts and uh, how you won't waste time wiring. Um, let's first start with the, our giants are female slide. Uh, I want to highlight the ENIAC 6. Uh, ENIAC stands for Electronic Numeric Integrator and Computer. It was a computer used during the Second World War to calculate artillery trajectories, something that I've also been involved in in my job. Um, it was a team of six women, and uh, they actually wrote the first programs and implemented them um, and did a lot of debugging uh, since um, there weren't enough men, they were to the war, and uh, those women had to engineer and keep the computers running. But uh, after the World War, they were replaced by returning soldiers and didn't get the recognition they deserved until the mid 80s uh, in the computer museum. It, it, they were told to be refrigerator ladies, um, just models that were there to make the photos, the pictures look good. Uh, and then uh, a student found out that they were actually the programmers and they got restored in their honor and uh, even a a movie and a documentary were made about them. So I'm sure they didn't have any shortcuts, uh, just cables. And uh, something about me, I live in Belgium, still 43 years old, I work at Intersoft Electronics. Uh, my hobbies are running, playing board games and reading, so you can find me on those platforms. Uh, I use LuckU since uh, previous century, 99. Love you five, so that also makes me kind of a veteran. And I'm also a member of the SES Love You Mastermind group, which is a group that Sam Taggart put together. We gather twice a month and discuss Love You stuff or, or related stuff, and it's been very inspiring. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter, and since I did this pre presentation. Several weeks ago, I started with the hashtag Lucky Shortcuts, which is a weekly uh, tweet with one of the shortcuts you'll see today. About Intersoft Electronics, um, the company I work for, we are located in Belgium and we are active in radar um, market. So we don't uh, deliver radars, but uh, test equipment um, and radar upgrades. It started with test equipment uh, and um, also turned into upgrading existing radars. Looks like this. We deliver hardware for uh, testing equipment on site for maintenance of radars, but also entire racks with signal processors, uh, displays, video extractors, stuff like that to upgrade existing radars. Uh, what do we use LabVIEW for? Um, a lot of our applications, especially the offline ones to analyze uh, data uh, are made in LabVIEW. Um, a lot of them are active framework based applications and we also do them with the plugins, back library plugins. I'm also involved in uh, process improvement in the company. So it's continuous integration, looking at Jenkins to do the automated builds, um, doing code reviews, design guidelines, starting with unit testing. So we use the Atlassian toolkit, so Jira, Bitbucket, um, 
I like fork uh, as a Git uh, ID. Um, and we also bought the Delacor toolkit uh, to, to have some processes and a good start with code reviews and unit testing. For today, um, I'm going to talk about native LabQ shortcuts. So what's in LabQ itself out of the package. Um, also native quick drop shortcuts, the ones that you get um, when you install. And then also custom shortcuts um, from the community. So you need to install them. Well, links are in PDF. There is a PDF available. It's kind of a booklet and it shows all the shortcuts. And they are also linked, so you can click them and you will go to the community page to download them and install them. Uh, I'm gonna mention shortcuts. I'm not gonna tell you how to install them or create them. That's for other presentations. Um, the first half of the PDF are the native shortcuts. Second half are the community shortcuts. Um, and I'm going to put something in the chat. You can find the PDF, this presentation, and um, the project file and VIs that I'm going to use to show things uh, at this link. That's where I did the first presentation. Uh, some remarks. Why do you want to use shortcuts? Well, it increases your efficiency. You don't have to click that much. It prevents repetitive strain injury. You don't have to click constantly, or you can just be lazy and want to do too many things. Um, there are multiple ways to do the same thing. You can choose different quick drop plugins, or you can choose a quick drop plugin or do it with a right click menu. It doesn't matter, just choose the one that fits you best. Um, coding faster doesn't mean coding better, um, but you will gain time to think about your code, review it, clean your code, and write documentation because we never have time to do that. So hopefully, if you speed up your uh, programming a little bit, you'll get more time to do these things. Code faster is not faster code. So this has nothing to do with the performance of your code, um, but just about using scripts uh, that can wire things faster than you can click. And another thing, wire without thinking, but don't program brainless. Use your muscle memory to wire and edit. Use your brain to program and develop. And then there are some useful links to shortcuts, to quick drop enthusiast on the LabQ uh, forum, shortcut menu plugins. You can find them in the presentation and you can also find them in the PDF. So let's get started because there are a lot of uh, shortcuts to show and might go a bit fast. Uh, like drinking from a fire hose or watching one of Pep's videos, but you'll uh, get the presentation and can review them afterwards. Um, and don't try to memorize them all today. It's choose uh, a couple of them and then uh, start learn them one by one. Uh, pick the ones that help you the most in your daily work. Uh, I still refresh my memory every time uh, I do this presentation. So let's start with the uh, left shortcuts. Uh, one more thing, you'll see the shortcut that I'm actually typing uh, online. Uh, well, on the screen, like Control E here to switch. Um, 
that's a small program that I'm using. And if anybody's interested, um, it's called Karnak. And best place to download it is from its GitHub. So let's start with the shortcuts. Now in the LabPew um, block diagram, you can move stuff and you can move it up or down layers with Ctrl K or Ctrl J. Uh, if you your shift will go all the way up or all the way down. When you resize stuff, you can also make sure that it resizes um, with shift it will keep the ratio with control it will resize around the center point that's the resize this is uh, when you want to drag something control drag will copy it control shift drag will Copy it in just one direction. You can add some space and you can also reduce the space with. If you control drag, it will add space, control alt drag, it will reduce the space and you will see the red line. Control A is select all, which is pretty obvious, but I've put this here because the next one is Ctrl Shift A. And I really like that one. So when you align stuff, Ctrl Shift A will repeat the last alignment. Also, when you distribute stuff, Ctrl D without the shift will repeat the last distribution. Let's do the last alignment again. So now they're all aligned and distributed. When you want to search for something, Control F shows the search window. Control Shift F will pop up that window again. And Control G will jump to the next one. Control Shift G will go backwards. Uh, you can cycle uh, windows just like in the normal Windows environment. With the Control Tab, you'll just cycle the LabQ windows. Control Shift Tab, you will cycle them reversed. Control L will pop up the error window, so without having to click the run button, the broken run button. Also useful in the project explorer. If you open a project, just control L and everything that's in memory, you'll see whether there are errors or not. Control Shift E will show the current VI in the project explorer. So if you have a large project, you don't have to look where the VI is, but just from the PI itself, Control Shift E, and it's there. Control Shift W shows a dialog, an all windows dialog. So there's a very nice dialog. You can show the window that you select. If you have a lot of PIs, you can save it from here. You can also select multiple VIs and close them all at once. Or you can select them all except for the Project Explorer and then close the windows. So it's a nice overview of what's open. Control Shift B is the class browser. So here you can select like this is a control class and I want a A value property note. Uh, it's here. 
you can create property nodes from here. There are easier ways to do this, you'll see later, but it's in the help file. And I wanted to mention this one as well. Um, from navigating from panel and block diagrams, uh, control E, probably the most known uh, shortcut in LabVIEW, switching. But uh, I can do this without touching the keyboard. Uh, it's it's an extra mouse button. So I just click the middle mouse button and it's easy to switch. I'm so used to this that it's, it's hard on a, another uh, laptop or PC. And I use X mouse button control. So there's a link uh, in the in the VI here. Uh, quick drop, control space shows quick drop. But we're going to talk about that a lot later. Um, when you do control T, it will tile the window. And you can undo that with control Z. Control slash. Will, will maximize the window. It's already it's maximized or restored. And special control T is also a, a sh quick drop shortcut that I like. But if I'm too fast and forget about the control space, then suddenly all my windows are tiled. So control Doing an undo there is very useful. Uh, Ctrl Shift N, very nice, but not recommended. Shows a navigation window. No very large block diagrams. You can navigate to the other end of your block diagram. But please don't do that. But if you ever inherit uh, such a big block diagram, you can navigate it. Control I is a quick way to uh, show the VI properties. So instead of going right clicking there, VI yeah, properties, just Control I, and we get the properties window. Control Y is the same for the history window, if anybody uses that. We all use uh, Git nowadays, so we don't use the LabVIEW history anymore. Uh, there are in the LabVIEW shortcuts um, help. There are some uh, shortcuts on in the VI hierarchy window, but I don't use them often, so I don't have them memorized. When you're debugging, you're often using uh, these three little buttons on the top, so start single stepping stop or step into, step over and step out. So you can do that with control down, right or up. General file operations, they are similar to most applications, except control W will close your VI and control Q will quit left you. Also in basic editing, Mostly the same control shift set is your redo function. Some applications use control Y, but in LabVIEW it's control shift set. Uh, for help, uh, control H will pop up your context help. But very often when I want to help, and I want to open the the extended help function. I accidentally hoover over something else and then it's gone. So with Control Shift L, you can lock your context help window. And now it's locked. You can see it on the little lock over there, or you can unlock it again. In using your tools and palettes, um, if you have automatic. Uh, tool selection enabled, um, you can still toggle some tools. Um, with the space bar, uh, it, 
depends on, or you know, it's the shift and the control. These two can, can switch to the positioning tool or the next most useful tool. The other ones are especially if you don't use automatic tool selection. But I started to use it lately and I, I start liking it. Once you get the touch of where you have to position, it's so maybe are people using automatic tool selection or not? You can put it in the chat. I'll still uh, continue with the sub PIs. Um, so when you double click a sub PI, it will open the sub PI, of course, and you control double click it, it will control double click, it will open its block diagram immediately. When you have a sub PI, you can drag it, it will be there. Um, when you shift drag it, it will be there with all the inputs wired as constants. And you can, of course, take anything from your palette, right click, and put it there. But when you control right click, then the palette will open. And when I do this, it will open the VI instead of uh, having it on the mask cursor to place it so you can open the vi from your uh palette immediately by first right clicking to open the palette now control r will run your vi if it's not broken and control point will abort it just remember that this is not a stop button it's a real abort button an emergency uh, control M, if you're on a front panel, it will switch between um, run mode and edit mode. So this is run mode, this is edit mode. You'll see the grid, but in edit mode, you can in run mode, you can also see your uh, context menus of your controls. While in edit mode, this is just your editing. It's a nice way of uh, seeing how your VI will look like without actually running it. So that's control M. Control run or control the run arrow or control shift run will recompile and with the shift it will recompile all the eyes in memory. While you're running you can use your tabbing order and the tab button to jump through them and with shift tab you go backwards. And if you're key focuses on an array or a cluster, you can use the control down or up to go into or out of that uh, control. Now, if you're wiring, you can click a wire signal and it will select it. If you double click it, it will select it till the next node. If you triple click it, it will select the entire branch. Now, when you're wiring, um, I hit A, it will enable or disable automatic wiring. So now automatic wiring is on and it will try to go around the sequence. Now it's off and it will just go straight through it. Also, while you're wiring, while you're moving something, um, now it uh, keeps the connectivity of the wires. I can toggle that with W, and now they're not connected anymore. Now they're connected, now they're not, and now they're back connected. Uh, delete this one. So spacebar will switch the direction. We'll go this or this way. And if I'm moving this, the auto automatic wire connection will make sure that if it's close enough, a wire will appear. And with the space bar, I can also toggle this while I'm still moving the object. So now it's not wired, although it's very close to the constant. 
shift your wiring. Don't want to wire like this, but you shift click and that's your last point. Yeah, you can see all the things that I'm clicking because it's not so shift click and you can undo point by point. And uh, when you select with the wiring tool on a function with two inputs, um, control will change the wiring tool to the switcheroo, which will swap your inputs. You can also do this, this um, in, I think it's new from what you, 2019 or 2020, 2019, in no, 2020, you can switch it if only one input is wired. But you have to select the wire input to switch that one. Um, now for text, um, if you have an enum, In this case, I can shift enter and it will add a new case. Also, here, B, shift enter, C, shift enter, D, e, shift enter, D. E. Now, I added them all here. If I do uh, this A case and I do a control shift enter, it will duplicate the case, not the case name, of course, but just the content of the case is now duplicated instead of adding a new one. And when you select the uh, text with control minus will decrease the font size and control equal will increase the font size. And now some things that are new in LabVIEW 2020. I also checked the uh, Public beta of 2021 is available, but I couldn't find any brand new stuff there yet. So. Uh, just a quick. This is a link to a video. Yes. Sorry, I put a poll in the chat um, so people can vote who uses automatic ring versus who doesn't. Uh, okay. Let's see how that turns out. Yeah, great. Interesting to know. It took me a long time to finally switch over. And one of the reasons is will show up in a few seconds. Uh, but this is a, a video where Darren explained the uh, new things in LabVIEW 2020. And I've listed a few here. Um, so on an enum, you can select item. It will give you a nice dialog box. So we'll go to whiskey. And if, especially on very large enums, it's an easy way instead of scrolling through them on selecting items. Uh, also for cases, showcase, same thing. Just go to that case. Um, also the rearrange cases dialog has been changed. So I can now, Select multiple. I can even move those here and sort this selection. Delete a couple if I want. Select them all and control A, sort them. So very nice way to arrange your cases faster without having to constantly drag them to get them in the right order. You can hide this. Data node, if you're not using it, plus there was always this little one uh, data node that you didn't wire, but visible items, and you can hide it. Also, in for loops and while loops, if you don't use the iteration terminal, you can turn it off. And you can select stuff, and then right-click, create cluster from selection. It will put them in one cluster. And this is uh, also something brand new that I saw on Twitter a month ago. So if you are in an array, you can tap and go to the next one. Shift tap, go to the previous one. You can control delete 
and it will delete the current one. So it will enter, it will insert below. Uh, shift control delete will delete the one above. Oh, that was too much delete. And um, shift control enter will insert one above. This works on 1D arrays. On 2D arrays, you just have the shift and tap. So the, the tap to go through them or backwards with shift tap. So that was the reason that uh, I switched to automatic tool selection because you need automatic tool selection enabled and you even need it locked. Here, the lock automatic tool selection in the options um, because otherwise your tab will just select another tool. So these are the native lab shortcuts. That's what everybody gets when like is installed now we're moving over to quick drop shortcuts quick drop control space you'll have quick drop um first of all we're going to see if you have a lot of screens and your quick drop window is somewhere and you can't find it with the f3 you reposition it to your primary monitor center And also, your context help is now synchronized with Quick Drop. So, whatever you type in there is in your help window. Makes it easier to see if you have the, the thing that you're actually looking for. Now, this VI is uh, an overview of some common uh, Quick Drop shortcuts. Um, and I've uh, organized them by data type. So, for the numerics, you have a uh, numeric constant, double constant, infinites, and some uh, uh, functions. And for quotient and your remainder, you have QR or mod. So you can use them both. Um, Boolean operators, the true constant, the false constant, and some operators. Uh, string functions, the string constant, concatenate, or format string. These are the ones that I use most often on the screen. Uh, arrays are array constants, built array, initialize array, index, a two, 2D array size or actually matrix size. Uh, clusters, cluster constants, error constant, bundle by name and unbundle by name are probably the ones that I use most in quick drop. Uh, all kinds of structures. Um, case, for loop, while loop. Now, you might wonder why it's not FL or WL, but it's a lot easier when your right hand's on the mouse and your left hand's on the keyboard. So it's a for structure and a while structure. Some conversions, you actually just type in the, the data type you want to convert to. And you get the converter. Uh, via server, you get a property node and an invoke node. Very easy to insert uh, on quick drop. And then on the front panel, I don't use a lot of quick drop because I usually just want to see what I'm selecting. But you can also use um, JKI's design palette, which is a quick drop like. Uh, thing for uh, front panels. Now, on another thing of useful thing in Quick Drop is you don't only have the front panel and block diagram shortcuts, you also have control key shortcuts, which are small scripts, the eyes that do things for you when you invoke them. So there are some default ones in LabVIEW. Control Shift, Control V or Shift V. When you select a property node or an invoke node, you can type in like string, Control V, and now it's a string node instead of a pod node. Change it back to pod, Control V. 
Uh, usually, if you use the reference here, it's okay. But um, is it, oh, is it, is it? No, is it? Control Shift D will actually change the property that you're using here. Disable Control Shift D, and now it's this one. So you don't have to look for it in this very, very long list. Control Quick Drop Control D will wire all your terminals on a selected sub API, and Control Shift D will only wire constants to the inputs. If you have a sub API, uh, Control Space Control F will arrange the front panel controls according to the connector pane. So you'll get the same layout there. See this one. Control. Let's see. We'll do and control I insert. It inserts something on the wire. And now that's the default behavior. Um, last week, my tweet of the week was this one with also a link to the community version that allows uh, inserting from the clipboard. So when I copy this not function and I don't enter anything here, control I will insert whatever's on the clipboard. Now when I copy this and I want to insert it in between here, control I will insert it twice. So that's not what I wanted to do. I have to select the wires, control shift I will only insert it once. When I have a VI, and I do quick drop control K, that was the one of this week. Um, we'll, thanks, Jörg. We'll uh, update the VI icon with some text. So it will be a text based icon based on the VI's name. So when you have the default up view icon here with the number, at least give it a, an icon with a name so you can distinguish it from other ones. Control O, if I just scroll here, quick drop control O will reset to origin. Also, block diagram, scroll way down, control quick drop O, and I'll get back to my origin zero zero at the left top. Control P, about the same as control I, but it replaces. So um, let's say I'll do it if I. Control P and it replaces. And this one is also a community version with a clip uh, replaced from clipboard. So now it replaces with this one since that one was on my clipboard. Control R removes and rewires. So I select this function here. Control R, it's gone and the wire is rewired. And control T, the one that I was talking about earlier, will move my labels. Uh, controls, control labels to the left, indicator labels to the right. So they're a bit big here, but usually they're nicely aligned. So if you have a lot of controls and indicators, uh, you can wire multiple things together. So I select these three VIs here. And I wire them together and they're nicely wired. If I select everything and I wire it together, Lap is even clever enough to just wire the top ones and the bottom ones. And when I control shift W, it will wire and even clean up this little piece of code. So everything up till now comes out of the box with Lap That's default. Now we're moving to the custom plugins. So there are on the LabVIEW uh, community, there's a LabVIEW um, QuickDrop Enthusiast page, which has a lot of uh, QuickDrop plugins, and I just collected some of them here, which I believe are very nice. So um, 
Also, another thing, the, the letters that I assigned are arbitrary. You can assign whatever you like um, because this comes from community. They have um, uh, a default one, but a lot of them have the same letter. And yeah, you. my, my keyboard's running out of shortcuts, but also there's a solution to that. Um, so when I select stuff, quick drop control A will add my mouse pop up this little dialog, which we all know from the top here. And then I can type in the L from left. That's enough. I can also control A, just click this one, goes to the left. And uh, when I control shift A, quick drop, also, the distribution uh, buttons are enabled. With Control A, they were disabled. Now everything's enabled, and I can left. Want to do it like this? Okay. Control C. That's a create menu. So, quick drop reference, or just ref Control C, and it will create a reference of the thing I selected. Um, also. Select multiple stuff, local variable, control C. I'll get those three local variables. There you go. You can do that with locals, create what? Property nodes, RN, control C. It's here. Now I'll do all these property nodes disabled, and function V, and they're all set to disabled. So, They were on top. And when I open a sub VI quick drop, I assign the E Windows Explorer. It will open my Windows Explorer and show the VI over there. So it's a nice way to go straight to your folder where the VI is. Um, Control G. If you select the a wire, a terminal, constant, or even a sub PI with a with a class. You can control G and it will show the project, the, the class in the project for, um, window. If you like wire uh, labeling your wires, you can type in my label. Um, control L, it will set a label over here. Another label, control L, like this. It doesn't work on multiple wires, so you have to label them one by one. If you want to change your numeric representation, I want to change this to a byte integer, control M. Now it's a byte integer. I want to change this to a double, email, control M, and it becomes a double instead of going representation, all this stuff. Um, this is a script that contains a lot of things. It's to netify your VI. Um, there is a quick drop plugin that Darren created that does a lot of things. It's in terms of automatic error handling, auto, auto grow off, um, front panel gets a default color. Um, all controls and indicators on the block diagram go to terminal view. Um, all error wires move to the back plane. It renames your error console error in and error out instead of the no error uh, between brackets. Um, sets all sub diagram labels to left justification. So this wouldn't be true anymore because it moves to the left. Um, it moves labels like I do with the control T to the left and right side. Makes those labels transparent. And it cleans up stuff. So um, it can be useful before you do a code review or a VI analyzer test to quickly do all these things in one uh, quick drop uh, plugin. I got Control Q here. So if I do some formatting, like three digits behind the decimal points, Control Q will then apply this format. You can also change this to 
percent B, change it to a Boolean representation or back to X. Uh, actual Q, sorry. So, you can, there's something, if you have a lot of pains and splitters, um, there's a plugin, Control S, that will launch a small plugin and you can find your splitter, give it a different color, move it. Like, that's a nice one. There are other ways to do this. Um, pain relief is one of them, but Tom is going to talk more about that. Um, there are, and, and I got another right click uh, plugin that also takes care of this. If you're using the user interface manager, which is a nice tool that we're using, um, quick drop control U will capture states. Now the user interface manager, there's a link here. Um, tools, fly manager tool. It's actually a tool that converts your front panel, all the properties of your controls to XML and back again. So you can capture stuff. And then it says, well, this um, control array is not blinking. I got a, there are a lot of plugins for that one. And um, you can capture states. It's very useful for multi-language stuff because you can change your uh, captions and it also works on the fly. So even if your VI is running, you can capture it or load uh, a state from a file and apply it. Um, very useful for multi-language, also useful for um, uh, administrator rights and stuff like that. If you want some user to not see buttons or you can do it by loading such a file. Um, the BI ignore bookmark is a bookmark that tells BI analyzer to ignore stuff. So uh, waiting while loop is one of the tests. So I put in the test here. And I do control V and now this loop won't be tested on weights in the while loop by VI analyzer. If I but it's over there. Um, if I select the class with control X, uh, it's uh, runs a plugin. It's a quick drop like window, but only on that class. So you get to see all the, the methods from this class and not an entire uh, quick drop uh, list. Now, control Y is quick run. And if you run out of keys, you can assign small shortcuts. You can configure it here, like I want ACP to align to connector pane, which is this quick drop plugin. So then when I type in ACP in the quick drop window it, and, and then control Y, it will run this one. So if you're out of quick drop or out of keys for quick drop, there's a way to get around that with this plugin. Then uh, control Z, you can do it will auto size your cluster. The default is vertically, but if you do H or R or horizontal, it will do a horizontal fit. Um, no, yeah, it's an auto fit. Um, and that's also on the form. And this one I created myself, and it was very nice to do. But uh, I think Tom will show you later how to create those uh, quick drop plugins. Um, this plugin lets you control, insert an in place element on arrays or clusters. So for arrays, it's an index. You can update an element, or is this like a bundle or unbundle? 
control, this one will rotate my scroll bars so now they are always off, always on. I think. I can't go to edit uh, run mode because it's broken. Um, now, this one, you know, when you're debugging something and you're probing it and everything works and you're not, and when you're running it faster, yeah, it doesn't work. And um, so with this one, you can apply some magic. It was an April Fool's joke of JKI. So I'll do this one. And then there's a magic fairy that puts in a magic random delay and now everything will work. If you're using disabled structures, you can select a disabled uh, diagram and enable it from here. So, go to the disabled one, and we just enable it instead of clicking and then looking in the window. Where is it? Um, yeah, I'll enable this sub diagram so you can do it with quick drop. Um, I got a tool that's doing auto documentation. I received it at the last GDEFCON. Um, if you have this kind of labels in your VI, so input, description, output, you can convert them into your VI help. So if I go to documentation, this VI has no help description. I'm going to do this no help description here. So quick drop, I'll run the Auto documentation tool, and I'll update it. So now inputs are my value outputs, no description. So these labels are in the VI documentation. So it's a matter of putting those labels in your code and then running the tool once you have a, an updated documentation. And then there's a search tool, which um, Derek Bomarito is working on. It's a beta tool, but it can search and it has a search history. So every time you open the tool, open the tool, you get a search window. You can search for, uh, I'm not sure. Search. It shows up here in the history. You can see your previous uh, searches and you can uh, go to them. Should be in the list there. So you can remove stuff, go to select it. The nice thing is that it has a history. But we'll hear more about this, uh, I think, in the future. But you can Google it and it's, it looks promising. So now a few also supports uh, shortcut menus. So to extend the default right-click menu, you right-click on something. There are plugins that you can find in the LabVIEW community um, that make things a lot easier. Like this um, right-click description. And now the description that I just Created with the auto documentation tool is here, and I can even update it from here. You can select code, right click, and benchmark this, which will put a flat sequence around it with timers, and you can uh, check how long it takes to run it. Nice thing is you can select the sequence and remove the benchmark structure so that it's all gone. Mechanical actions, usually they're in the advanced or they used to be now or in the data operations. I think. No. Now, this is a pop out uh, plugin that pops them a level up. Now you have mechanical actions and you can immediately change them over here. So. If you have a class, you can right click and change lock view class. And you can select a class you want to change to. 
on an array, you can right click and uh, data operations, copy delimited data into notepads, for example, then you have a lot of delimited data. Or if you're working with JSON data, you can copy as JSON, open notepad, paste it, change it, copy it again, paste from JSON. So if you use a lot of JSON, that can be useful. Uh, you can even do it on a cluster, copy as JSON. It'll look like this. Or a numeric will be like this. It's a numeric. If you have a input, which is a cluster, you can create a constant as an icon. So if the cluster is very large, don't take up too much space on your block diagram. This is a UVI because it won't work if there are too many um, event structures, and my demo contains a lot of event structures. Um, right click, create event case for value change, for example, and now it's there. Add it, numeric event, value change for this numeric event control. If you have a lot of frames, where in a case, for example, where the an output isn't wired in all the cases. You can right click, create. Um, but yeah, you have to right click on the inner side of the terminal and then create constant in all unwired frames. And it's there. And if you accidentally right click a little bit too far to the right, it will be there. You can replace those. Uh, input tunnels with border nodes or arrays or clusters on um, in place element structures. Usually when you create a constant, in this case, a constant array will be created. If you want to create a scalar constant, that's also possible. Create scalar constant or control or scalar constant. Actually, the create create scalar constant. This is the one that my shortcut menu plugin uses. I think this one is default to LabVIEW 2020, as I used to have only this one in previous versions of LabVIEW. When you select multiple wires, you can do a create sub VI from selected wires, which will create a sub VI with the correct inputs and outputs. You can start working on that one. So by just uh, selecting multiple wires. If you have a control, right click, find events, and you will get a list box with all the events. You can go to them. And there's a mass down event and a value change event in this event structure for that country. You can find the wire source. So uh, find wire source. We'll show that the wire starts here. This wire starts here because it goes through the tunnel here. It won't go through sub of course. The wire starts there. You can change three labels into constants. So if you have a text change to constant. It will change it to a Boolean, it will change it to an Americ, or to a string. And I think it checks in that order. So if you can't make a Boolean out of it, we'll try to make a numeric. And if that doesn't work, it becomes a string. If you want to grow this build array or a bundle function to like 10 elements, and you have to count them one by one. There's an easier way to do it. Um, grow to n elements with a 10. Okay. This bundle, grow to n elements, 5. Okay. 
um, on a cluster, you can insert BDN bundle by name, and you can select which um, element you want to insert, like a status, and then it's there. This also works on classes. So on a class insert, I have two elements in my class, this one. Um, insert build array. So if something needs to become an array, it's an easy way. It's a shortcut menu plugin, or it used to be a shortcut menu plugin. You can also, just like the bundle by name, you can um, insert in place element structures. What I did before with the quick drop plugin, you can also do it insert in place element structure. On uh, locals, you can select multiple ones and change to write, or change to read, and then select change to read or to write to, to change them all at once. Um, there was a quick drop plugin to do this, open class from a wire, but you can also do it with a right click menu and show class library. Goes there. Personally, I prefer the quick drop plugins because I'm used to typing stuff in the quick drop window and I always have to search in this list where is the one that I need right now just because I'm not using that very often. Um, if you're using the active framework, which we do a lot, um, you have this VI which actually sends a message, then the active framework will run a do.vi and that will then actually run the run the method itself, what the thing that you need. So an easy way to get there is open message handler, which goes straight to the, the VI that's executed when you send the message to the actor and it does what you want. So it saves you a lot of clicks to go to all the message classes each time. You can open a type diff from a wire with this plugin. So um, open type diff, not from the constant, but it will open the type diff if you only have the wire. Um, breakpoint menus, so there you are, set breakpoints in the breakpoint manager. This is also a pop out plugin which moves your breakpoints to the top level of your menu and it also works at runtime. Also, the create menus they didn't used to be here, and in the past, there was a plugin to, to get them there. On compound arithmetics, you can probe all inputs at once. So you get a probe window, and it has put three probes here. Also works at runtime, so if you're debugging while it's running, it can be very useful to have those inputs uh, probed all at once. Uh, change property nodes to invoke nodes, or the other way around. Um, replace with invoke node, or replace with property node. On a wire, you can insert coercion functions to get rid of your coercion dots. Um, bundles or property nodes, you can remove unused terminals. So clean stuff up. You can, um, instead of doing this or I, how I did it with quick drop, you can also right click, select property, type in this, oh, this enter, it's there. So you get a, a list. Um, select property, value, this one. If you want to search through a list, that might be useful. You can, in an event structure, set the current event. You select uh, the control that's in there and set the current event to value change. So now it became a Boolean event value change. Go this control. Another way of um, setting up your splitters and paints is by using this plugin, set up splitters and paints. And it's also a nice UI. So 
you have splitters, you have panes. Again, set the scroll bar stuff, um, the splitter. Move, move things. I like the other one a little bit more. Multiple ways to do things. On text labels, um, if you select it, you get the text, and then the usual justification or formatting can be done straight there. If you have um, multiple constants or can select them and then create a bundle. It will add them to a, a bundle. If you select the same data type, you can also create a built array. Or if they're the same data type, they're all strings, you can also concatenate those strings. And you can add those functions from your right click menu. And this one. Um, if you have a, a class, especially useful in, in actors where you want to have a reference to do a control to update it from a message, you can right click and then add reference to the class. I'll show the class first. Show class library. So my class now contains a dummy boolean and a string. Now right click, add reference to class data. It created a reference here because probably I'm going to need it to write it to the class, but also the reference now here. So reference to dummy, and I could then insert this one and wire it there. So I think that's it. Those were a lot of shortcuts. So just um, take a weekly look on my, my Twitter account and I'll remember you of one of those each week. And thanks for watching it and hopefully you all learned a few more shortcuts. Thank you so much, Stefan. This is the most impeccable timing I've ever seen. It's like pinpoint perfect one minute before your time still ends. I don't understand how you do that. Um, one question that we all have been asking us is how many of those shortcuts do you use in your daily work? Do you remember all of them now that you've given know. the presentation so often? Yeah, um, yeah, but I don't use all of them. Um, but I use quite quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly yeah, the, the things that you do the most, inserting stuff, uh, on, on a lot of clusters, bundling, unbundling, uh, changing um, those uh, property nodes, stuff like that, I do pretty often. Um, but then you have more specific ones. Um, and I, I think yeah. each time that I have to do one thing over and over again, I'll pick up a, a shortcut for that. But this was just an enumeration of what's in the lab to help uh, and what I could find on the on the community. Yeah, I think um, it will need some going back to your PDF, which uh, I want to mention again is available for download from the link, uh, which we'll have in our slides. So we'll share that later on. It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, I did this presentation first time for the batch lab to use it, and then we created this booklet. And it's, it's actually printed as a booklet. Um, and well, if we ever get back together again, uh, Sam wanted to print new booklets. So, okay, cool. Okay, there are not really any specific questions to you. There was some, there were some things going on in the chat. Um, I think that's it. Thank you so much again for doing that for us. And I will be make sure to distribute the links, as I said, so people can go back to that and. Um, have another go. I think I rewatched the presentation. There were like I think ten things I've never heard of before that are, that I was very excited about. So thanks again. That's a nice start. Start with ten things to remember. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you're um, right. Yeah. Thank you. Next.
time slot we have is for Darren. Um, the next hour we will be learning stuff about the RedClick menu plugins, so it's a good segue, I think. Um, we just saw what Shefa did with those RedClick menu plugins, so let's find out <laughs> what's it all about and how to actually create them ourselves. Darren, are you ready? I think I'm ready. Let me share my screen. Awesome. Do you want to briefly introduce yourself? I'm not sure. I guess everybody knows you, but just in case. Uh, sure, I can introduce myself. First of all, I want to make sure you guys can see my screen. Is everybody see my yes, slides? Yes, can. Excellent. Okay, um, my name is Darren Nettinger. I am a longtime NI employee. I've worked for NI for over 22 years. And most of that time I spent in LabVIEW R&D working on a lot of the features you saw in Stefan's presentation and a lot of the stuff I'm about to show you. Uh, about a year ago, I moved over into the tech support department at NI, which is where I'm at currently. So, um, yeah, uh, there's going to be a bit of overlap in the content that I'm about to show. Uh, I'm going to go into uh, every every possible detail of the right-click plugin feature that Stefan covered toward the end of his presentation. So I'll go ahead and get started. All of the content you're about to see is on ni.com slash lvmenus. If you go to that page, that's the enthusiast page for the right-click plugin feature of LabVIEW. There's a link at the top of the page that says comprehensive introductory presentation. That is the presentation you're currently seeing. You, you can download the slides and all the demo files from this presentation at ni.com slash all menus. Um, by the way, I, I don't see the, I guess just through the way my screens are arranged right now, I'm not looking at the chat right now. So if you guys have questions during the presentation, feel free to unmute and ask me or I can, or I can get to them at the end when I, can, when I can move screens back around. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is how there are a lot of different ways to augment the LabVIEW editor. But then I'm gonna get right into the bulk of the presentation, which is the right-click menu plugin feature. I am going to demo building a basic plugin. I am probably going to quickly demo the inventory of shipping plugins since uh, Stefan already covered a bunch of those. Then I'm going to talk about some of the tools that are available for developing your own. And um, throughout the course of my demos, you may be wondering why we designed the feature the way that we did. So I've got a few topics related to the decisions behind the design of the plugin feature. And then a few caveats and pro tips to keep in mind while you're working on your own right click plugins. So, Right-click plugins are just one of the many hooks that there are in the LabVIEW editor. You saw Stefan dem demonstrate several of them, like the Quick Drop plugins and the right-click plugins. I have given a presentation on every single possible way that you can hook into the LabVIEW editor with G-Code, and that presentation is at bit.ly slash dnetlvhooks. And in that presentation, I talk about all the topics that you see there on the slide there, Quick Drop plugins, right-click plugins, uh, analyzer tests, all the different ways you can plug into the editor. So even though I'm just covering one of those ways right now, know that there are many, many different ways that you can write LabVIEW code to plug into the LabVIEW IDE. So, but we are here today to talk in gritty detail about right-click plugins. This feature was added in LabVIEW 2015, so we've had it for a while. But prior to LabVIEW 2015, if you wanted a new right-click menu item in the LabVIEW editor somewhere, you would have to go ask a C++ developer in LabVIEW R&D really nicely if they would add the feature for you. Uh, it was not possible for LabVIEW programmers like ourselves to add right-click menu items into the editor itself, but this was added in LabVIEW 2015. There are two different types of right-click plugins. The one that I'm going to talk about pretty much exclusively in this presentation are edit time plugins. So there is no VI running. You are editing VIs in LabVIEW and you right-click on things and there are items in those right-click menus. That is the type of right-click plugin I'm talking about. It's also possible to write runtime diagram plugins. So while the VI is running, you can write G-based um, right-click menu items for the right-click menus on the block diagram. Those are much more rare. Uh, you very rarely see those. They tend to have to do with things like optimizing things with breakpoints and probes, really. is about the only things you can do there. Now, this feature does not apply to menus whenever you right-click on a front panel while the VI is running. And the reason for that is we already have had that feature for many, many years. That's RTM files. So you can define custom runtime menus for while your VI is running. Now, there have been a few use cases identified where it would be nice to be able to write right-click plugins that also work on front panels at runtime, but that, that is not part of the feature currently. So uh, for all intents and purposes, we're talking about editor features for the LabVIEW editor to make us more efficient. There are ways that we can write plugins for that. Now, you, you may notice I'm using the word augmenting instead of adding, uh, and that's because right-click plugins allow you to do more than just add right-click menu items. They allow you to add hierarchy in the menu, so you can add pull rights if you want to. Right-click plugins actually allow you to remove menu items. Um, I wrote a right-click plugin one time to remove the convert to stack sequence structure menu item on a flat sequence, just because I thought that was funny. Um, you can also replace existing menu items. There's a few right-click plugins that ship with LabVIEW right now that replace built-in menu items to do something more custom. And then another way to augment the menus, you can disable menu items or put checkboxes next to them. 
So there, you can do all of those things with this feature. That's why we talk about augmenting the menus because it's a lot more than just adding new things. So there are four steps to building a right-click plugin. The first step is to create the plugin, and plugins are LLDs, and I'm going to talk about more, more about why that is later. Then you update the affected item inside depth, you update the builder BI, and you update the execute BI. Those are the four steps for building a right click plugin. And I'm going to go through those four steps right now in a demo. So I'm going to bring up LabVIEW, and I'm going to open up a tool that ships with LabVIEW that lets you create new plugins and resource plugin pop up menus. There's a BI called Create Shortcut Menu Plugin from Template. And I'm going to create a plugin for doing spell checking. So that's, that's my demo today, is a plugin that will create a spell checker. So I'm going to call this plugin spell check, and I'm going to run the BI. And this is going to create the plugin for me and open up the BI for me to be able to edit. All right, now remember I said step one is to create the plugin LLD. That's what I just did by running that tool. Step two is to update what's called the affected item type depth. This defines which objects in the BI that you right click that this plugin will operate on. Um, for our purposes, we are writing a plugin that is going to do a spell check on string controls on the front panel. Now, we could say that this thing will spell check anything. Like if you right click on a wire loop, we'll spell check its label. Or if you right click on a wire, it'll spell check a wire label. We're not going to do that today. We're just going to define a plugin that does a spell check on a string. So what I have to do is I have to tell the plugin, I only want you to operate on strings. And so to do that, I go into the affected items and I change its class to string. Um, I could add other items here too. If I wanted this spell checker to work on string constants, for example, I could add another array into this affected items cluster of string constant references. In this case, we're just going to operate on strings. So I'm done updating the affected items by that. So that's step two of writing my plugin. Step three is to write the builder BI. This is the BI that runs when you right click on a string. And there's a bunch of comments in here. Don't worry about reading all those right now. That's all part of the template. But this is the BI that allows you to figure out whether or not you want to provide your right click menu. Um, how you want it to appear in the menu system, like where you want it to appear, um, whether or not you want to add additional menu items, you have access to the VI that contains the item that was right clicked, you have access to the menu that is about to be displayed for that control. So there's all, a lot of things in here that you can do for when the user actually right clicks, what do you want to do? How do you want to construct the menu item? Well, in our case, I'm just going to leave this VI alone. By default, this is going to insert our menu item at the very bottom of the list. That's fine with me right now. Um, if this were something I was wanting to be more fancy, I'd probably do a little more customization here. But in our case, we're just going to leave the Builder BI alone because all it's going to do is put the menu item at the bottom of the list. So that, that's perfect. I don't even have to make any changes here. The fourth and final step for building a right-click plugin is to write the Execute BI. This is the BI that actually does the scripting to uh, perform whatever editor operation you're wanting to do. So I'm going to delete these comments here just to get some room on my diagram. So I have an array of all the strings that were right-clicked here. So what I want to do is I want to do a spell check on those guys. Now, at this point in the demo, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I already have a sub BI written that does a spell check for a string control. So uh, it would have taken me a little too long to write all this code as part of the demo. So we're just going to, uh, that's, that's by cheating. I, I already have it written. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the spell check on the control. And if there were any spelling errors in any of the strings that I spell checked, then I am not going to fail the transaction. Failing the transaction means you tell LabVIEW, pretend like the right click never happened. And you would want to do that in cases where maybe there was an error. Or in our case, if all of the strings that we're spell checking don't have any spelling errors, then there's nothing to do. So we can fail the transaction then. So that's, that's that logic there. So I'm, I, you know, I cheated a little bit with my sub-BI, but I'm done writing my right click plugin. We are now ready to try this thing out. Except for one other step, which is we need to refresh the menu system in LabVIEW and tell LabVIEW, hey, there's some new plugins that you need to load into your system. So to do that, I'm going to use the refresh menu BI. Now, this is a VI that I already have available in QuickDrop and the palettes because I have the Hidden Gems package installed. If you've never seen my Hidden Gems presentation, it's about all the really cool, useful things that ship with LabVIEW, but they're not in the palettes and they're not in QuickDrop by default. Um, that presentation is at ni.com slash hidden gems. So if you want to go check that out, that's where you can get things like this cool palette of VIs that have all the hidden gems that are part of LabVIEW. Um, anyway, Refresh Menus is a hidden gem. I'm